Hello, Neil here from Red Flare, and I'm going to go and show you some of my techniques and detail around the resin uh, base that I've casted now. Um, this is one of the 1 12th scale bases for um, just general kind of uh, Star Wars models and, and things like that. And so this is about 83, 84 mil on either side. It's a square base, um, but it's got a lot of texture and detail. And what I've done, as you can see here, is I have cast up the base. Um, I've given it a little quick, quick coat of primer, um, but really, um, you know, the detail here is there's a sandy texture. Um, and uh, little kind of rock details and things here. And then what I've done is I've casted and molded a separate rock that is going to be placed here. So what I wanted to kind of do is just go through some detail, um, really kind of show you some of the textures and techniques to make the looks, rocks and the sand look very realistic before you start to add your models. So as you can see, I have just added a little bit of um, super glue, so uh, to, to the uh, to this rock. Um, and as you can see, there's a little bit of detail around the edge. I've got to fill in, but um, that's that's now mounted on there, nice and solidly into the position that I want. So. Um, the rock is, is, is made so it can be repositioned or used on other models, but this um, now should be in a different um, you know, uh, position. So it's, it's showing certainly for options, it can be orientated around the other way if you feel like it, but that was the way I, I, I wanted this on this model. So there we are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal around the bottom and apply some uh, just plastic filler, um, various model fillers that I have. So one of the favorite fillers that I tend to use is the Vallejo. Um, this is plastic putty. It's an acrylic resin filler. Um, Sorry about the, the light on there, but it's, uh, it's, it's really useful because it has a fine tip and allows me to uh, just squeeze the tube and get some um, detail in uh, very small places. So it, uh, it, it allows me a lot of precision um, and um, you can uh, do, do quite a few different things when, when you're applying. Well, a lot of the other tubed fillers don't give you this much uh, detail with, with such a, a fine nib, so it's really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the base of this, just filling some of the gaps in, and um, I'm, I'm going to prepare this ready for the next stage. So I'll come back in a minute when I've done that, and I'll show you how I've done it. Now the great thing about this Vallejo filler is I can use a, a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it and I can um, smooth off the edges really, really quickly. You don't want to use too much water, um, but just enough to um, kind of wet the, uh, the, the filler down. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm just a little tiny gap there and the thing. So, what I'm planning to do with this, obviously, um, I, I want to go for a very red texture on the um, on the uh, kind of sand um, and the rocks again, you know, a very reddish and, and uh, orange tone. But I want to put a little bit of um, brush and foliage at the bottom. So, you know, really what I want to do is leave a few gaps and a few cracks because obviously I'll fill those with, with, with a bit of detail. Um, but, you know, really just wanted to uh, apply several washes. And my technique I'm going to show you really is, is how those, um, uh, those washes are applied. So I've got a couple of gaps here that I'm just going to fill in. Bit, a 
the filler just to fill the last bits down here. And there's a tiny hole in the bottom there I can see. And one down there. It may never be seen in the final model, but it's always nice to include it. So just dab that in there. Obviously put the lid back on. And the reason why I'm dabbing this is I, I want that organic feel. If you if you leave the, the, the filler on too much, then it's um, it's going to take some of the texture away. So, you know, what, what I'm trying to do here and around this edge is um, lose this, this filler here because that's filling in some of the detail. Um, so I'm going to kind of dry that off and let that dry and it will allow me to then um, uh, put, put kind of lots of different washes on this. Um, so I'm going to just clear that off so it's nice and sealed around the base there. So I hope you can see that. Um, there, good. Right, we're back and I have let the plastic putty now dry for about 20 minutes. It's probably longer than it needed to, but I wanted to make sure I got a nice even kind of um, uh, uh, kind of dryness to it before I applied the, the next coat. So what I'm going to use is uh, Tamiya's uh, NATO Brown. It's just a general kind of color. I wanted to give that, that um, base detail. I wanted to use, um, you know, uh, before I started to apply the red richness of the sand, just applying some, um, some brown. So as you can see here, I've started to apply it pretty much neat from the bottle. And um, you know, I'm not really caring where it goes on this. I'm just um, you know, making sure that it is covering as much as I can on the model here. So as you can see, being quite liberal and splashing it all over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, continue to apply this um, nice color. Some areas are thicker than others, but it doesn't really matter as long as I'm getting in all those nooks and crannies, all those crevices, and more importantly, stippling it. Um, this is just a, you know, not one of my best brushes, but I'm stippling it into the uh, the sandy texture just to make sure that it it sinks in completely. Um, one of the things that you're going to need to worry about, and it may need a couple of coats as well, but don't be afraid, you know, make sure that it goes into the to the detail of uh, of, of the base that you're, you're, you're making the application, the paint application to. So there. Definitely probably going to have to worry about painting another coat afterwards. Especially when the paint dries, you'll get a different colour as well. So there we are starting to paint that rock. Let's just leave that tin there as a pop, pick it up. I'm not worried too much about the sides either because the detail around here I'm going to, I'm going to um, paint up in a lot more detail. Uh, there's lots under there you can probably just see can, getting into that bit there. You can use a different brush just to get into that kind of underhang there. Now it's interesting that that underhang has come out completely as part of the resin cast so you know, you've got to be worried when sometimes you, you create resin casts that you uh, don't create too many um, uh, overhangs and underhangs. Um, that certainly is one that um, is, is okay because it's small enough in there that it's not had to worry too much uh, about the, um, 
the, the, the resin and the, the silicone mould. Depends if you're moulding your own or you're buying one of my bases. So there we are. Making sure that I'm just getting all of that in there and this is definitely going to need a second coat I think. But you can see now that that's now looking a lot nicer than it was. That boring grey. That boring grey. As I say, this is the one of first of many, many layers that will go on here. Probably end up putting maybe even close to 10 different layers. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll start to texture with these base colours to give it some depth. Then obviously you're going to highlight colours, use base um, uh, shadow tones, especially around the rocks. You know, they're where you're going to spend a lot of detail. And I'll show you the techniques for that as well. So. As I say, this at the moment is looking pretty plain, pretty boring, um, but I'm going to continue on this one and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Right, just a quick one. I have laid down the first coat. It's still wet, as you can see. Um, it's very wet, but it's drying around the edges and things. So I'm just going to leave it for a little while. There's still some touch up and detail, I think, in, in, in terms of filling. That I want to do. Uh, there's a tiny gap. I can't really show you too much detail. There's a tiny gap at the bottom here, um, but I'm gonna uh, get rid of that in a minute. So yeah, reapply. But yeah, so I'm just gonna leave that to dry. These paints are pretty good. They don't take too long, but obviously I want to make a good job. Now. When you do this, I mean, don't be afraid to experiment. One of the um, kind of challenges that you might face is you're too afraid to use a particular color because the color's not right. There are various different products out there from Vallejo to uh, Green Stuff World. And some of the paints out there are really, really nice. I've tended to use some um, uh, kind of uh, textured paints and crackling paints from Green Stuff Worlds mixed with just standard um, Vallejo and, and, and other brands and AK uh, is, is some of the things I use. So, you know, mix and match, um, you know, whatever feels right to you. But, you know, think about the tones, think about the colors, do a bit of research. Make sure that you understand what a uh, you know a, a really kind of reddish desert would look like, or if you're going for a more of a sandy desert, you know, um, you try and do some research. You know, there's Death Valley and other uh, photography and scenery out there that you could really get a lot of um, uh, uh, you know, material that gives you some idea of what you need to be painting. So you know, take lots of reference. Make sure that you have that, um, uh, you know, on your computer, on your screen and just, you know, mix and match against that as you're applying those colors. But first, as I say, put down your base colors, then start to apply and layer up and layer up and layer up. OK, I'm going to come back to this when this is all dry and we will continue shortly. The, the rough now dried some redwood brown for world on some so, you know there's the brown underneath and there's the red and tone on top it's very very um uh, what do you call it uh, shiny at the moment uh, but that's because i'm going to be applying these additional colors so i have uh, a kind of yellow ochre um, wood uh, middle tone middle stone sorry and um, uh, yeah, some, some orange brown and then lastly some peach flesh so you know different colors really but they're 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 here for me to kind of really look at um at, you know giving it a bit of texture because one of the things you need to do is you need to layer this up so it's important that once you actually apply different tones different textures to this you want to bring out the color and it can take 10 or you know 11 different layers to really kind of make it work so this is um this is kind of the starting color the base color the deep colors on the bottom and then working up to the highlights um on, on, on the top so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start to um 
apply the first tone. I'm probably going to um, the the middle um, uh, middle stone color by the um, Vallejo, and uh, it's it's an airbrush color, but I'm going to apply it with a, a brush. Um, so I'm going to do that in a second. Okay, so I've got a large brush. Uh, you can see that there. Just put some of the, uh, the paint on this. Put the paint in there. So a little little dab of paint here, and I'm going to brush most of that off. Um, get rid of this um, here. Um, so I've I've got a little bit of paint on here, um, and firstly just apply this. So that's uh, you can see now that's going on, and immediately it's starting to. Um, take that really red tone off. Um, so do it really randomly. And it's surprising how fast and how much paint still resides on a brush when you're doing this. So this technique is known as dry brushing, if you don't know already. What it's doing is it's just picking out the surface details and highlights while leaving the low lights and the detail underneath. Paint. So again, don't be afraid to apply this um, as much as you need, because what you're going for is an overall effect. Now I want the, the, the rocks as well to be a slightly different colour. Um, so what I'm going to do is, once this has been applied, uh, I am going to um, make sure that I kind of choose a different uh, tone for, for the rocks. Because that will be slightly different. this at the moment but and what this does is it brings out a lot of the detail um, from the molding you can see lots of cracks and crevices and you know it's important that when you apply this you get in as many areas as possible to really pull out those levels of detail so you can see immediately that that's already pulled a lot of the uh, the redness, whoops, the redness from this uh, red, this red with brown. So that that's pretty much you know um, toned back. There's going to be a lot more colouring that's needed here. So once you put your figure on the base, that then is going to make. A, uh, a you know a scene for your for your model, um, and it's going to allow you to really kind of present your model in a nice way. This is just a, a, a wide brush that I'm using. Um, it's it's got a good set of bristle bristles, and it allows me to apply a lot of paint where I need it. So there. But I've still got a lot of redness there, so I want to take that out. So the next colour, obviously, that I want to do is a slightly lighter colour, maybe uh, the, the wood um, or even the orange brown. I'm going to leave the orange brown for now. I'm not sure if that's the right colour to apply, but certainly the wood is going to be one um, that I want to kind of add in now. Um, so I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then come back to it. Okay, this is now dry, so I'm going to apply the wood colour, which is a lot yellower than the, um, the the middle stone that we applied before. And as you can see, as I'm brushing it on, um, actually it's, it's a little bit subtle, but there is a colour difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this on the, the, the ground, 
because I'm going to worry about the rocks in a minute. Um, but as you can see, so I'm using the brush edge to really get into the under the rocks. That little bit there I'll worry about later. So I'm putting a little bit of paint on and then I'm taking a lot of that paint off straight away using a piece of just paper towel. Um, as you can see just taking that paint off to reduce down the amount of paint that I've got on the brush. You don't want to put lots of paint on. So this technique, as I say, is called dry brushing for a reason and it is down simply to get that detail on top. Need a bit more paint. Now, as I say, it's up to you what colours you use. But the thing is, as well, is you want to really give it that lived-in look. You know that desert feel here. Yeah. see that it's a lot yellower now yeah uh, again I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna put another layer on One thing that I like to do is I like to experiment when I put the paints on. So in, in my mind, I have an idea of how that is going to apply. As I said, you know, I spent a bit of time with with a mood board and looked at uh, how I was going to, you know, apply that by doing a lot of research online. But at the end of the day, it's about experimentation. So don't be afraid to experiment and have fun. That's the most important thing when you're doing this. So anyway. Paint's dry, so I'm going to go back to adding the next layer. Right, Peach Flesh this time. Um, Green Stuff World, Peach Flesh. Uh, there's, there's quite a few different versions of Peach Flesh around. Um, this one is a lot, lot um, kind of uh, paler in colour. Um, you're going to sh show that there. Uh, hopefully the camera's going to pick that up. Um, and it's going to add, it's going to pick out, it's going to really kind of pick those um, uh, points up. So a little bit of, a little bit of paint on the brush first, um, to really kind of there, and apply that on the, uh, on the paper. And again, I'm just doing the sand. So one thing that I'm uh, uh, looking at here is, is these are different highlights. And you can see it's, it's cooling the color there you know that redness is completely gone but it's still there as a little tint so you know this is much more like a sandy area now um, and it is definitely but there's still areas here and here where it's a lot deeper Colour in there, a bit of colour where the sand's built up. Not needing much of this. This is uh, one colour that's not needed to want too much. I'm going to give a little bit of texture on the rocks. So this is where I'm starting to apply more of 
the dry brushing effect to the rock to pick out little areas like in there, you know, look at that. you don't need much paint on this at all uh, you can see just applying a little bit of paint brings out a huge amount of deal so really feather it on feather it on yeah some nice red rock and this is going to really stand out. I mean, I was, um, uh, I'm going to use uh, C3PO, and Bandai's C3PO for this. So obviously he's golden, and I wanted to have a bit of contrast with that. And you can see now that just three layers later, that red and that deep brown has really, really gone. You can see some of the red still in there, um, and, you know, the, the detail in here, but really you know that is gone from the base now so what the base needs is it just needs some additional kind of light colors so actually I am going to start to apply some pale flesh the reason why I'm looking at this is it's still got a little bit of um, brown tints and tones in it but it is very much whiter and lighter um, you can apply a little bit so I'm going to stipple this on very very small amounts so I'm going to again let this dry in a few minutes um, and then apply that. I also have some dwarven flesh as well from Green Stuff World, slightly different colour. As I say, what you need is a good range of different um, browns and tones, tints, reds, so that you can really kind of work on those. But if you're really stuck, then you can make you know blend your own. You need some uh, core colours, and you can mix some yellows, whites, and reds together to give your own. But obviously. If you can um, make the investment, get some of these colours yourself. So that's uh, that's the next layer. So again, let this dry and come back to it in a few minutes. Right, a few minutes later, and we have hopefully the base and the paint is dry. So I'm going to apply the pale flesh from uh, Green Stuff Oils, as I mentioned. And uh, again, you know, just very lightly, the, my tiny, tiny amount. And what I want to do is pick out areas where they are slightly highlighted. And as you can see now, this is really making areas where it's showing that highlight. And it is just very, uh, very light touch. Now obviously this will dry, so it's going on, and you may need a couple of coats of this. Don't worry about the rocks for now, because again, there we are. So this is really coming, in fact I'm going to put some additional highlights on the rocks, because these rocks really... So I have created these rocks. Um, they were cast and molded, and the whole base was cast and molded. And they were made from various materials and uh, and kind of assembled. And then, as I say, I've I've, I've cast them in resin. Um, so they're really solid and robust. But they're giving a lot of a um, lot of effect and a lot of detail. They're, they're really nice in the, whoops <laughs> uh, in the way that the um, the crevices and detail uh, you know uh, as you would find a rock in the in the desert, um, so the Death Valley or something like that. You'd, you'd find some rocks there. So you know, I went for something that looks a little bit alien as well. I wanted to um, show you know, highly weathered stones and rocks, but at the same time, 
something that's got a little bit of character. just to pull out a few areas in really pale colour and it's really coming along now you can see the difference from what it was with a just essentially a big blob of brown this now has got a lot of definition a lot of colour a lot of texture to it it really got some depth and it's got in my mind it's coming along and it's going to be a really nice base now the other things that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, various kind of uh, foliage and, and little bits of um, uh, you know, brush uh, essentially that we would find on uh, you know in, in these cooks and nooks and crevices of, 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 of the uh, rocks where moisture would have collected and, and plants would have grown so again you know in certain areas I'm going to do uh, do that and I've got I'll, I'll come on to that after I finish the painting but really just you know a part of the diorama base is to give it some a sense of, of, of creativity so what you want to do is make it your own and really work really hard to shape and evolve this um, but as I was saying before, you know, experimentation is part of the modeling process and we want you to kind of understand that there is a step-by-step -step logical approach to the way that you build these layers up. But beyond that, it's your work, your own, and as much as you goes into this work. And over time, you'll get used to building these bases and creating more and more work. So I hope my videos are helpful. I'm gonna come back to this in a minute when this is dry and again, we'll apply some more colors. So hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'll speak to you soon later. Right, now I'm gonna apply some yellow ochre. Um, again, Vallejo Air, which is great for your airbrush, but I'm applying it neat with a brush. Um, now the reason why I've chosen this uh, yellow ochre is is I, I want to uh, concentrate a little bit on the rocks now. Um, I want to bring some of the detail out on the rocks, and so I, I feel that you know at the moment everything's looking a bit samey, um, and so I, I've got a smaller brush now. Again, you know, dry brushing here, but with the yellow ochre I can um, kind of just give it a slightly different tint. I'm not sure how much you can see on the video here but it is bringing a slight a little rock there now normally I do wear gloves um, I'm not right now <laughs> um, and the reason why I wear gloves is to Set the model from fingerprints um, doesn't matter too much on a base but when you're painting a figure um, it's always important to <laughs> not ruin the figure with a big smudgy fingerprint um, the other side of it is um, just just clean up um, it, you know it's a lot easier to clean uh, uh, you know and wash your hands and stuff after you've finished if you've been wearing gloves especially now during covid I guess uh, everybody really needs to kind of uh, be a bit more careful about what they do. Now, as you say, um, one of the great things about the hobby world at the moment is a lot more people have got time to spend on their benches. <laughs> so again, you know, just as you can see now, just applying a tiny, tiny tint this yellow is giving a lot a difference yeah. I will take some photos afterwards adding the yellow 
over here just gives the rocks a slightly different feel to the sand and enables you to again you know do some different creative things with your model and I'd be keen to kind of see as well you know how, how you uh, kind of look at this you know there's you can do it with obviously um, deeper uh, and kind of grey tones um, so marble and granite and um, you know, other other different rock tones um, or you know similar to this where you've gone oops, reds um, I just want to get it there so again you know lots of application but it's really really coming together now and now you know applying those slightly yellow tints to here means that those have come up the rocks have come up um, in, a, in a in a different way there's a little bit in there I want to finish off there so again you know still got the reds in there still got the, the tones the, the 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 layers that have been building up and building up and it's just about looking and applying things um, and you know really coming to um, a, a, a happy place I guess with how I feel about looking at this um, so yeah um, again give it a few minutes to dry and I'll give it another coat I am going to apply a bit more pale flesh um, again because it, it, it's good for highlights um, I feel that there's a little bit more work that needs to be done around the stones so again I've got a small brush tiny tiny amount here just to bring out some of the detail here but I don't want to lose that yellowness so I'm just being very cautious about which bit I apply it to now what I am going to do is I'm going to get some much lighter colours there so again just really quick and simple but don't overdo it um, you know one thing you want to do is apply this in a, in a way that you're happy with but it doesn't um, saturate so you know, it's kind of making um, the, these these tiny tiny detail changes Now one of the last colours I'm going to add in is a light brown grey by MIG. Um, again, uh, airbrush, but uh, applying it by, uh, by by standard brush. And that's the thing about the airbrush colours is they're really good for both. Um, but the light brown, uh, light, light brown grey, just has a light texture to it. And again, you know, applying some detail here just to pull out some of these edge colors on the bricks and the rocks giving it that paler color Now, the one thing about paint as well is obviously when it when it dries it goes slightly cooler um, and uh, duller so don't be afraid to add in a couple of coats if you feel you're not happy with it now the reason why I'm applying this 
right there, so it's, it's giving. There we are, that's a little bit of pale flesh again just here. You can see now that they are a lot, lot duller. Just a tiny bit more of the grey in here. To take that down, and that's really kind of dulled a lot of that definition from the reds. Just a, just a tiny bit of stippling in there, just to bring that out. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to clean up the sides. I'm not too worried about the sides for now. to dry and we will come back to that later. Now I'm really happy with the way that the base has now looked. Um, multiple layers have gone on, as I've shown you in the, uh, the, the, the techniques before, and it's um, got a lot of kind of um, character now. But to really give it that extra touch, I'm going to start to add these. These are little tufts. Um, they're mounted on, on kind of a, a sticky uh, material on the back. You can buy them online. Any retailer sells them online. So. Um, do a bit of a search. I've got some uh, flower ones, I've got some desert light ones, uh, little tufts from uh, you know, um, wild meadows. So I'm going to come to the board now, I'm going to show you how I apply those. Now I've actually applied a few of these already. I'm going to show you with my scalpel here. I've got the flowers applied to this rock here in a little crevice and applied some of these tufts. Now what I've also done um, I don't know, that's, that's just uh, show you around the back here. Um, these here, these are long tufts of um, just a paintbrush. So it's an old paintbrush. Let me just show you now. Um, as you can see, lots of, uh, lots, lots of bits <laughs> cut off of it, the, the, the past. And these, these paintbrushes, um, you can buy from uh, any any local kind of um, you know, decorating center, DIY center, or even local store. Um, they're really good in the fact that they're quite cheap, and you can you can use the materials um, and cut them down, and just use a little bit of tiny glue to uh, stick them again. So you know, what I'll, I'll show you here. Um, uh, slice through with a scalpel. And that's given me a couple of tufts here. Pick them up and uh, just align the edges. And then with a tiny bit of glue, you can use PVA glue. Um, you can't really see the glue here, but I've got, uh, I'm actually using wood glue. I find the wood glue for me works stronger in um, uh, when, it, when it sets. And I'm choosing a place on the model and I'm going to position it in. Now it takes a few, like a few minutes to dry. Um, so, you know, I tend to tend to wait until it's a little bit drier and then move it around. Um, but, you know, what that's doing is it's giving some effect. So I've got the slightly yellowy green um, grass. These ones are very much bleached. Um, so there we are. In fact, you know, if you've got, I should be using a uh, a pair of tweezers for this. Where's my tweezers gone? Uh, lost my tweezers. Um, yeah, there we are. So really, kind of positioning that. Now, for these, again, cut. The material down to what you need it a little tuft there um, and you know you again this is a good technique so I'm going to uh, apply a little paint to the base and then 
stick that down in there and again it's just about what you're happy with and how you're applying that so what I'm also doing is I'm taking the flowers so these ones are um, they've got a little more greenery and uh, um, pink and yellows but I saw you know you can you can buy cactus you can buy different kind of materials and, 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 and foliage um, again just cut them down I'm cutting tiny bits of this you can you know, don't use it in big clumps I would suggest you know you don't use it in big clumps um, yeah oh, nice bit there take all the bits that stick up and the good thing about most PVA glues is they dry clear and dry white so you don't need to worry about that and then just choose a position that you think would be useful there's a little spot in there that I want to stick them in to show that there's odd places on this rock where seeds have got in and they've started to grow And it's just a matter of working around the base to really finish it off. Right now we are still working very hard on putting these um, tiny bits of foliage on. Nearly done, but uh, a little bit of glue there, and I'm just gently applying them to the surface let's stick a bit there it's not sticking today is it some desert material here so again just applying that in the last bit of detail just so we can give it a bit of sticking today must be the humidity there good get there in the end <laughs> so just apply this around the base it's determined not to stick today is it Tweezers. The glue's drying very warm today, so one last bit. I've put most of them around this side. Obviously it's like it would be catching moisture on this side, so um, I think I wanted to put a piece in the top there. Just so it gave the impression that there was something growing out of the top. Can you see that? There. 
And so just the simple application of a few of these tufts really, really sets off the model. In fact, there's a couple more I'm going to do. So I'm just trimming this piece down. Need a bit more glue. Doesn't seem to be behaving for me today, does it? There we are. And one last piece on this here. As you can see, that now is looking really, really nice. The textures really come off well, nice and sandy. The rocks have got this light little white sheen to them, like bleached. They've got tiny foliage growing out of each of the cracks and crevices now, and it really, really sets it off, makes it a huge difference from the first piece of white plastic. Now I've just got a bit of cleanup around the sides um, and pretty much we're done with the base and I, what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like once I've got the figure on top. So yeah, hope you're, um, hope you're happy with the progress.